Hello, sir. How are you? And what house is this? Is this your house? That's, no, that's my house. That's my workshop. That's your workshop? That's my man cave. Okay. That's where the man cave was invented. So you're a blacksmith. You were an important I'm figure in the community because you met the needs of the community. Yeah. Is the fire going? I'm the most important man in the community. I don't doubt it. You got a fire going too, right? Oh, God, shit. Well, sure. What, what, what have you been making today? Well, I'm finishing up making for the day now because... Oh, okay. My fire died out. Oh, I see. Well, you can't do much. Right. Get my bellows going there. It's the way they used to heat that. What things did you make today already, though? Uh, I was just demonstrating, you know, magic. Horseshoes? Yeah, just showing, showing people, like, how basically the, the process of... Good. Know, between using the bellows to get the coals up. Right, the heat. right. Right, as you can see here. This is a double bellows. Yes. That's the old bellows we took out. Which we were using up to four weeks ago. And this is were, a better one. This this is brand new. Wow. Brand someone who can make them. So the way the way a double bellows works is, you might remember, you know the old bellows you go. Right. Right. This is a double bellows, so it goes just goes all the way through. So they're constant blowing yeah. on the fire. Yeah. If you, if you actually, I can see it doing yeah. that. Can you hear it? I hear it. Yeah. I see the fire getting hotter and hotter. Yep, that's getting hotter. There's the metal. There's the metal. Look at that. Right. And what they used to do was the blacksmith, it was always dark in here. Yes. And the reason it was always dark was if you come over here, I'll show you. Do you see in the shadow? You can see from can the see shadow the, of the. Uh, yeah, you can see the, 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 the color of the metal. Right. But if you look at it there now. Right, you can't tell. You can't tell. But if you look at it like that, like, you can't tell what's hot and what's not. Exactly. So you can see there, it's, it's red. Cooling down really fast, though, isn't it? It cools down fast. So he works. He has to work fast, right? right. So he puts it in. But it's, as you can see there now, look. That's not workable at this point now, right? It's not. It's still. Though it's still red hot. If you watch here, look in the dark. It's still red. Yeah. It's actually still red hot. Oh, okay. Okay. So you could do a bit of work with foot. So it was always dark. Right. right. They used to bring the smaller horses and the donkeys in here. Right in here. Oh, yeah, on the cobble. Right. And that's where they'd shoe them. So they made custom shoes for the horses they and donkeys. They would make a custom shoe. A good blacksmith in the day yeah. could get, starting with his metal, take the measurement of the horse, and within 20 to 30 minutes, he will have the horseshoe made. He will hot shoe it onto the horse. Nail what what on. does hot shoe it mean? It means that when the shoe is still hot, not red hot, but hot enough, almost like what that bar was there then. Yeah. He puts it to the hoof, the horse, Yeah. puts it in and it burns in. Oh, wow. Right, it burns in. So that means then it's it's made, it's bedded into onto It's bedded the, into the, into the, ca yeah. into the uh, callus of the yeah, horse. Yeah, better it's a better fit. Tight fit. Yeah, and then he nails it in. And the blacksmith used to make all his own nails. Right. Because the blacksmith made everything basically. Right. Right. And that, so in half an hour he could do one. How hoop. how often do horses need uh, and, and new shoes? Getting getting general wear and tear, you'd be changing the shoe maybe every four to six weeks. Wow, that's a lot of that's a lot of work. Yeah. You know, you know a good working horse. It's going to be used a lot, you know, sure. on the road. So he's working a, a horse that's used, for, you know, just for pleasure in the fields and all. Right. Not as much. Not as much. But a horse that's actually, you know, pulling carts, carts all day long. Stuff, right. He's working a lot. So every six weeks or so. Well, every six weeks. This uh, this is the old bellows. Yeah. Which we took out uh, four weeks ago. Right. Which were still. The top bellows was gone, but the bottom bellows was actually still working. It was, that was a double also. That was a double. But you had to rig it because one of the bellows rotted out. The, so the top bellows was gone. Rotted out. Gone, right? Got you. And when we took it out, we discovered that this bellows was made in Birmingham in England. Uh-huh. Uh, approximately 1878. Very interesting. This bellows was then sent as a prototype or a, a, an exhibition model to Sydney, Australia in 1880. Oh, it was. And it was in the big giant ex industrial exhibition of in Melbourne 
in 1881. That's amazing. Right? And uh, they would have been, a, you know, that's the way they brought them over then. Where'd you find somebody to make a new one? We find the guy who made this is uh, up in a place called Feathered in County Tipperary. Oh. Where they know a thing or two about race horses. Right, oh, for the, right. Yeah. I mean, they, they make custom shoes for the horses too. Right? They do. But the farrier, the, what happened, what happened to the blacksmith? Like he was, he was so important, the blacksmith, right? Right. He, he literally made everything. If you consider, even when they would have been building the castle. Yep. In the 11th, 10th, 11th century. Yes. They would have been blacksmiths. Because the stonemasons couldn't cut the stone or sh- cut the, without chisels. Without tools. The tools that the blacksmith made. The carpenter couldn't make the doors even. Right. Without the tools the blacksmith made. He can't hang the door without the hinges. Hinges. So he can't so bolt the door without the bolts. So the blacksmith, the blacksmith was a really important person. In in those days, in those days and times, you know, you know, ten, eleven, hundreds. If there were, if there was a feast in the castle or a celebration, the lord and his lady sit at the top table with their noblemen, right, and possibly a priest or a bishop, right. And the only other guy allowed to sit at the table was the blacksmith. Was the blacksmith. Because he was so important. He literally was that important. That's amazing. Like he made the he made the swords. He made the weapons. Absolutely. He did everything, you know. So that's how important this the, he was, right? Absolutely. And then when when uh, agriculture developed, you couldn't go out and dig a field to plant your potatoes without the shovel or the spade with the blacksmith plow, made. The plow. Yeah. He made the plows. Made, made everything. He made, you know, he made these the things. sigh. Yeah, he made everything. Right. Right. But what happened to the poor, unfortunate blacksmith was, when the Industrial Revolution happened, one of the first things that they started to mass produce, because they had so many horses, that was the only way of transport. Right. Right. The cities. Horseshoes. They made horseshoes. So then a farrier could come along right, and he can fit a horseshoe onto a horse in five to ten minutes. Right. Because he's not making the shoe. He's not making the shoe at all. He doesn't need all of this. It's not as good a fit, probably. Nah. It's not, he doesn't need all this. All he needs is a small little bellows like that over there in the right. corner. Right, right. A little portable one. Right. He needs a little forge just to, to heat just, it up a little bit. Just to heat it so he can adjust the shoe to right. fit the horse. That's, That's it. it. Right? The nails are already been mass produced. Do you shoe that horse out there? We look after that horse. Do you? We look after him all the time. You shoe him too. He's a fun ratty horse, huh? He's a beauty horse. Though. Isn't he beautiful? Oh, yeah. So that was that was the start of the, the end of the blacksmith. The Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution finished them all. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. It was very, very educational. Pleasure meeting you. Nice meeting you, sir. I hope sir. you have a nice holiday. Same. I hope, I hope you have a great time.